The midterms are just seven days away. So all this week, we've been looking at specific congressional races in districts across the country to better understand what's at stake in these elections and what to expect on November the 8th. Today, we're turning to Indiana's first district, which has been reliably blue for nearly a century. One theme we've been seeing over and over again in the lead up to the midterms is Democrats' fear of a so-called red wave, a potential tsunami of GOP victories that could shift control of both the House and the Senate. But surely Democrats don't have to worry about losing Indiana's first district, right? This diverse blue-collar district has been solidly blue for nearly 100 years. Surely this district is safe? Well, not so fast. Republicans are running newcomer Jennifer Ruth Green. I'm not just a pilot or a combat veteran. I'm Jennifer Ruth Green. I'm a proud conservative, and like you, I'm concerned about skyrocketing gas prices and inflation, liberal efforts to defund the police, and woke madness, like indoctrinating our children with critical race theory. I've defended our country in combat, running counterintelligence operations in Iraq. In Congress, I'll defend the Second Amendment, protect life, and advance President Trump's America First policies. I'm Jennifer Ruth Green, and I approve this message. Trump supporter Green is making a serious run for this congressional seat, connecting with voters over issues like inflation and gas prices, while outraising her opponent quarter after quarter after quarter. She's also become something of a celebrity on the right, appearing regularly on Fox. Politico describes her as a black messenger who is a useful soldier in the culture wars for Republicans. Here she is discussing voter ID laws with Laura Ingram. In this country, we need IDs for literally everything. And it's honestly insulting to say that black Americans can't get IDs, won't get them. It's just a Trojan horse and another hat trick to continue to politicize race that we consistently see from the top and the elites and the Democrats consistently striving to use race to pander. They're not focused on the clear things like election integrity. They're just focused on getting Democrats elected, and it's shameful. Yes, I can hear it now. White Republicans gleefully saying, I can't be racist. I voted for Jennifer Ruth Green. Her opponent is incumbent Congressman Frank Mervyn, who easily won his race back in 2020. Mervyn's campaign has been repeatedly bashing Green for her stance on abortion. I am Frank Mervan, and I approve this message. Jennifer Ruth Green said she would ban all abortions, with absolutely no exceptions. I'm 100% pro-life. Not even if a woman's life is at risk. Not even if she was raped. Not even if the victim is a 10-year-old girl. Republican Jennifer Ruth Green would take away every woman's choice, no matter the consequences. We 100% can't send Jennifer Ruth Green to Congress. But that's apparently not resonating with voters. Steel mill, refinery and other labor jobs are big in that district, which includes the city of Gary. But Republicans have been making steady inroads among white working class voters and Latino voters who make up about 17 percent of the district. Democrats are even losing ground among union members, with two thirds of one union group voting for Trump in 2020. How is this even possible? It's a massive failure on the part of the Democrats. Think about it. Unemployment is at its lowest level in 50 years. Republicans are actively working to degrade union rights, passing deceptively named right-to-work legislation back in 2012. And the Democratic president, Joe Biden, is the most vocally pro-labor president in living memory. You know, you've heard me uh, say many times, I intend to be the most pro-union president, leading the most pro-union administration in American history. Government should never be a barrier to workers organizing. It's government's job to remove those barriers. And yet, the fact is, this race is a toss-up, when it really shouldn't be. For decades now, multimillionaire Republicans with elite educations, think Mehmet Oz, J.D. Vance, have successfully, have successfully been rebranding themselves with blue-collar voters and with voters of color as just like them, as people they'd like to have a beer with, demonizing the other guys, the Democrats. They're the elites, even as they hand out massive tax cuts to the billionaires and the corporations who fund their campaigns. Democrats need to wake up. In places like Indiana's first district, they have to have a clear economic, clear pro-worker message, a message about what they've achieved for the labor movement, for jobs, and a message about what they're going to do to cut the yawning gap between workers and bosses in this country. That's how they can win.